Hi, this is Maddie and Kirstie, and this is our final project. Lately, you may have noticed a popular trend in literature, most likely following the success of the Hunger Games of dystopian novels. These novels, while being great action-packed thrillers, also give us a lot to think about when it comes to climate change. For our project, we decided to take one of these books and see if there is any scientific fact behind this dystopian setting. We are doing our project on The Maze Runner, which provided a unique background compared to the other dystopian novels, as well as a cool opportunity to research space and solar weather. The Maze Runner is set in a futuristic, post-apocalyptic world, where massive sun flares have turned the world into a giant microwave. Besides that, there are tsunamis, earthquakes, and even volcanic eruptions in the world of the Maze Runner, making it not an ideal place to live. So first, we can start with some basics about global warming and the greenhouse effect. Life depends on energy from the sun. Around 30% of the sunlight that beams toward Earth is deflected by the ozone layer and then scattered back into space. The heat is then stopped by different kinds of greenhouse gases. This slows its escape from the atmosphere. So how would sun flares play into all of this? Sun flares are the cause of the release of buildup of a magnetic energy. They actually happen quite regularly, from a couple of times a day to many times a day, depending on how active the sun is at that time. Much like a volcano, a much bigger sun flare will happen every 200 to 500 years. Unlike the smaller one, these will have an effect on space. These massive sun flares, observed at up to 10 times the size of Earth, produce streams of highly energetic magnetic particles. These particles cause a disturbance in the magnetosphere, or general space, and solar storms may occur. Solar flares can also cause disturbances in the Earth's ionosphere, which is the layer that controls radio waves and can stop communication between electronic devices and mess with satellites. Sometimes, these particles will create a colossal mass ejection, a massive burst of solar radiation filled wind in space. This is what will actually have an effect on the climate of the Earth, much more than the actual solar flare. A CME drives a shockwave which continuously produces energetic particles as it propagates through interplanetary space. Geomagnetic storms contain their own embedded magnetic field, which disrupts the Earth's own magnetic field. At the current time, the most extreme side effect of a geomagnetic storm would be through a massive power outage. One of the best known occurrences took place on March 1989 when an extremely intense storm hit the Earth. The radiation on Earth's magnetic fields messed with the power grid in Quebec, in Canada. High magnetic current in the magnetosphere caused high currents in power lines, blowing out electrical transformers as well as power stations and caused a citywide blackout. These blackouts are much more likely to happen at higher altitudes. As a quick side note, these geomagnetic storms are also what cause the northern lights. They occur when highly charged electrons from the solar wind interact with elements in the Earth's atmosphere. Because of their magnetic tendencies, these will only occur at the poles. Of this time, sun flares have no proven connection to weather or global climate change. The only connection that has been found happened during the Marauder Minimum, a long period of solar inactivity. At the same time, Earth went through a mini ice age, during which the Earth had overall lower global temperatures. Coincidence, or maybe not, but most scientists believe that the two have nothing to do with each other, although there is no proof. The other way that sun flares could have an effect on our environment is through electromagnetic radiation, which explained very simply is different kinds of lights from the sun, such as gamma rays, UV lights, and X-rays. The same light that gives us life, around 14 nm, is the primary reason for global warming. As of now, atmospheric ozone blocks out the most dangerous UV photons at wavelengths shorter than 300 mm, which should be close to a much more harmful X-ray. In the last 100 and more years, human activity has been starting to break down the ozone, the most common way being through fluorocarbon and antifreeze and low-quality refrigerators. Many countries have banned this, but through more admission of this harmful chemical, the ozone could become depleted even more, letting in harmful UV lights and x-rays, which increase during a solar flare, depletion of the ozone could be very dangerous. But would it be enough to kill us all, or even turn our world into the apocalyptic world seen in books such as The Maze Runner? The answer at the current time is no. It would take many more decades to deplete the ozone and build up greenhouse gases, which is unlikely to happen since we have already discovered that this is bad for the environment, so why would we keep doing it? Then we would need a colossal sun flare that would send out enough electromagnetic radiation to fry us all. 
as well as cause worldwide power outages and losses of communication. But this is so unlikely to happen that scientists have not even begun to consider it as a problem. The sun, though, will eventually be the cause of Earth's final days. As the sun ages, it goes through the normal cycle of any star. It gets larger and larger and larger. This is because the sun is converting its nuclear fuel into energy and then starts to run out of fuel on the outside layers and burns the fuel that's left over in the core. Solar flares today are only a small or signature sign of all that nuclear process. One wouldn't expect incredible amounts of energy to be created without some surface disturbances or ripples and flares. Flares are the short term, days, weeks, months, crackles of the fire going on for billions of years under the surface of the sun. As the sun gets bigger, the edge of the sun's body gets closer to the earth. As it gets closer to earth, earth will get hotter. In fact, there will come a time when the sun will get so big that it will swallow up Earth's orbit, and Earth will orbit within the very edge of the sun's body itself. And then, eventually, the temperatures will get so high that Earth returns to a liquid state and becomes part of the sun, which, as well as being an apocalyptic future, would be the end of life as we know it. Of course, this won't happen for another 5 billion years, but it is interesting to think about. Conclusions. The natural process of the sun will eventually be the cause of Earth's demise. But as for today, unless the human race disconcerns all of the warnings about global warming and the ozone, combined with a massive-scale sun flare, there is really no evidence to prove that there are any of the causes of a foreseeable dystopian future through sun flares. And even this alone would not guarantee a worldwide apocalypse. Maybe we would all wake up one day in Hawaii. Anyway, for now, sun flares just are the cause of pretty lights and an occasional haywire iPhone. This has been Maddie and Christy, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation, and maybe you learned something too. Thanks!